Hi, welcome to video six. Uh, this is about getting multiple dogs to share. And this is very important when you have more than one dog. You want the dogs, again, to be more and more comfortable with each other around food to avoid fights. And you don't want dogs lunging at, at food that you've got in your hand, whether it's for them or not. And you don't want dogs fighting over it. You want to be able to try and minimise any chance of dogs fighting over food. So one of the ways to do that is teach a, as well as everything else, is teach a share command. And so a share command means that um, you can feed dogs out of the same bowl, out of your hand if you're giving treats. It also makes sure that if you're giving dogs treats and you've got multiple dogs, sometimes you need to call them all at once. Sometimes you'll call one and another one will come as well and they're all there for the treat, doing the thing. And so you want to, you know, treat them for being good or whatever. You don't want them grabbing at the treats and then getting in a fight over whose it is. So, again, I'm assuming you've gone through all the other training and, and your dogs are very comfortable around each other when they're eating, around you when you're eating, very happy to be touched, they've been desensitised to all of that. And that uh, you know your dogs. And if there's any doubt, as I said, and continue to say, where there's, a, where there's an animal and where there's food, there's inherent problems and risks. So always be aware of that. And this is really, really simple. And this is all I've ever done with every single dog. And that's just a bit of treat, whether it's kibble, you know, a um, bit of carrot or whatever. In the old days, it was just either a bit of vegetable or a bit of meat. So we often started uh, handling dogs with food at, um, you know, w with meat. And that's just the way it was. I suggest start lower down. Just It's just a bit safer. So all I'm doing here is getting the dogs interested in it. And I'm in between them. I can be doing this sitting down, but I'm in between them in case there's any risk. I'm not just giving it to them, I'm letting them just lick and taste. And then I'll give them a bit. Good. And I'm watching for any changes in body language. All right? Anything at all. Because I'm also letting them chew at it here while it's, I'm holding it in my fingers, I can also correct them if they get um, pushing. All right? And, and to do that, um, all I do is if he gets pushy, and he won't. But if, if, if he did get pushy, all I would do, Tenchi, sit all I would do would be push that back into his mouth a little bit, gently. I don't jam it down his throat, but I just push it in. The problem people do is when a dog goes to nip at food or anything is they pull away. And if I pull away with food, if I pull away for food, the dog tends to follow and continue to nip and, and, and grab at it. And that's where bites can happen. So instead of doing that, I just push in a little bit. Again, it's not hard. You can see it's very gentle, but the dog just arches back a little bit and, and the mouth tends to open. It's just a natural thing they do. Push in, the mouth opens, they release it. Like that. Yes, good. And especially if you've taught them that teeth don't belong on skin. And all my dogs from day one are taught they are never to touch me with teeth. So, by just simply doing that, the dog arches away and opens its mouth. Uh, if, there we go, see, if I pull away, the dog will naturally want to follow, so I come in. Like I said, I'm not sitting there and I'm not shoving it back, it's just very gentle. So if they get a bit tough, that's all you do, and then you add the commands, something like gentle, or something like that. All right? But getting back to this, again, I'm just letting them nibble, and just letting them take. And as you can see, they're very relaxed, very happy to do it, they're paying each other no attention, it's all on me, all on the tree. Yes. Yes. All right. So once they're really comfortable with that, I just bring them in a little bit. Koji? Koji? Yes. Sit. So now they're a little bit closer. Again, I'm monitoring the body language. Because they're here getting the treat and they're touching me to get it, I can also feel any tenseness or anything happening. But I'm... Um, You've got to stay really aware just in case. 
right? And then you keep doing this until they're 100% comfortable all the time. And this could take a period of days, weeks. It may take hours. If, if you've trained them really from day one, it really doesn't take that long to get this basic going where you can get them here. You just need to bulletproof after that. And that's just keep practicing. But as you can see, they're still very comfortable. And eventually I'll get them tension. Eventually, I'll get them really close. Yes, yes. I'm letting them at some... No, it's all right. Yes, good. Now, I'll begin to add the share command. Yes. Yes. Share. Yes. Share. Yes. You can see they're touching each other as they take the food. They're still very relaxed. Once they're really, really comfortable with that, I then begin to put some treats on my hand. I'll keep them away. Ah! So they know they're not to touch. Because I want them calm, I want them relaxed. Yes. Share. Yes. Yes. Share. And then I'll start putting in that share command. Right. I'm not asking one dog to take one and one dog to take another equal amounts. Uh, I'm asking, uh, Tenchi, uh, I'm asking them simply to share. Share. Yes, share. So sometimes one will get two, one will get one. What I'm asking is that dogs don't fight, don't get pushy with each other. Uh, share. Tenchi. Share. Yes. Good. And I'm asking that they stay nice and relaxed and nice and calm. All right, and that's how it goes just to get that idea of sharing. Now, if you've got two dogs, that's the first stage. If you've got more than two, you need to introduce. For example, I've got three. So Akuma, who's not here now, three, he would come in and I would do that with him and Koji. And then Koji would go out and I would do that with him and Tenchi. And so all of them not only go through it, they go through it with each other. It's no point if I just run them all through with Koji because then when these two, uh, Akuma and Tenchi get together, for example, they're different dogs, different personalities. So rotate through all your dogs so they all get it with each other. And you just want them where they're really calm. All right, we'll be back shortly. I'll bring all three dogs out. And I'll give you some examples how it looks when it's finished. Again, make sure you know your dogs. Always be very aware of any subtle changes in, in, in body language um, or just in their general behaviour as they're coming together. Keep distance until you're absolutely sure you know where they are. Very slowly bring it in until you can have the meeting out of your hand um, together. Remember... Again, I can't stress it enough, whether there are dogs or animals and food, there's always inherent risks. So you need to weigh those up. And if you're not sure, don't do it. It'll get in a specialist to help you do it. All right, I hope that helps. We'll be back shortly. And we'll give you some examples of how Cher can work with three, or, you know, multiple dogs. Okay, thank you. Okay, so here is an example of that. We've got a bowl, we've got food, we've got the three dogs. Now, at this point, like I said, they've all been trained up to, through all the videos. They understand the share concept. And here's a bowl with food in it. All three will be happy to eat out of that. Now, you may say, well, why would you do that? Why would you ever feed, you know, multiple dogs out of one bowl? With working dogs, we do it all the time. So it, it really isn't unusual. You know, I've had up to 20 dogs eating out of one bowl. It's just the way it's done often. Um, you may never want to do this, and that's fine. That's not just what it's about. It also begins to help guard against resource guarding. So it begins to help prevent that. Um, take the scenario that you're carrying a bowl of kibble and you drop it. And the kibble goes everywhere on the floor. Your leave command doesn't work. Multiple dogs come in, start eating it. They all get, you know, converge on one piece of kibble or get close proximity to each other and then start fighting. So this will help prevent that. Um, you're at a barbecue, 
Uh, one of your dumb guests, because there's always one, sits there and throws a chop bone out or a steak bone out, and the dogs converge on it, start fighting. If they're taught this, it rarely happens or shouldn't happen. Same if they throw bits of meat or something like that. The dogs shouldn't be fighting over it, and this helps prevent that. So you may not deliberately as such feed dogs from one bowl, but it helps protect if there's accidental spills or anything like that. And like I said, it also helps protect, um, guard against you know, dogs becoming um, protective of their own things, whether that's food or whether that's toys or blankets or whatever. So it helps um, teach a dog that resource guarding isn't acceptable anyway. So here, dogs, sit. Koji, sit. Tenchi, sit. Quick. Yes. Okay, take. Share. So in here they can get in and they can share and there's no argument, nothing. Again, I'm here ready to correct if there's any sign, but they'll eat, they'll finish, they'll be happy and they'll go on. And this is what you want. You want the dogs to be able to work around each other. So if, not so much like I said, if you're feeding this way, but whether or not there's spills or somebody throws something down or something like that. And also it helps protect, you know, against their toys and so forth. And you can see they're happy enough. He, he's gone. He's got his bit. He's off. This one's just wandering now and, and, and this one's still sort of sniffing. And they're perfectly calm and perfectly relaxed. And that's what you're looking for when, when dogs meet around food. You want it to be calm. You want it to be relaxed. You don't want dogs beginning to resource guard over it. You want to prevent that. So it makes it you know, as safe as absolutely possible when you have dogs around food and when there's accidental spills or anything like that. All right, um, I'll come back with one more example, and that'll be it for this one. Thank you. Okay, so this is just an example of what would happen in the scenario that food was dropped or thrown accidentally or otherwise. So here I've scattered out some food, uh, and the dogs can see it there, but it's a scenario where they then ignore any commands. They rush towards it, and then while they're trying to get it, they end up fighting over it. And that's what you don't want. So, scattered food. So, by teaching a dog to share, um, they won't fight over it. Okay, share. They will simply move around each other. They will gather up what they can. If one gets in the way of the other, they'll just go on to the next bit. And so, once it's been bulletproofed, um, the chances of them resource guarding this food is very limited. The chance of a dog fighting starting is very limited. Um, you can see as Koji went past, he brushed up against the Kuma. Um, the Kuma hasn't even raised an eyebrow about it. These two are now bumping heads as they go, and there's no argument. There's nothing has changed in their in their um, behaviour, and um, they're stay, staying very calm. And this is what you want. Um, from to be able to move around food, gathering food um, in a scenario where it's um, an accident's happened, it's been spread out, or if you are feeding them um, this way. But uh, like I said, it, it just simply takes that somebody spills food and dogs all rush in and everybody says, oh no, my dog's no leave it and everything else. But you can't guarantee that they will. And just because they have to now, it doesn't mean they always will. And if they always obey you, it's not always you that's going to spill it. Or like I said at a barbecue, somebody throws down meat. You want the dogs to be in this situation where they're calm. And the calmer you can have them around food, the safer it is for everybody. And, and this is it. They'll come, they'll eat, they'll work around each other. There'll be no hackles, no fighting. Um, the body language will remain calm. And when they're finished, they'll wander off and do their own thing. And so you can't just get food and throw it down and expect this is going to do it. You need to build the sharing techniques, and then you need to build this. And this is, um, you throw this down like this when you're, you know, you're confident that the dogs are okay. Don't do it if they're not, because you may get away with it once, you may get away with it a hundred times, but then you could end up with uh, a major fight on your hand, and 
you know, dogs will maul each other over food. They'll maul their own owners that they would never attack over food. So be aware of that. Don't skip any steps and don't just assume your dogs are safe. Always monitor them. So even when I put food down, always monitor um, no matter what, no matter how much I trust them. All right, I hope this helps. Till the next one.